Here are eight common mistakes new players make and how you can avoid making them. Medicaid stations are placed at strategic points across the map to help you survive, so use them. Healing in the Tide games is much more limited compared to other games, so if you ever get a chance to heal up, you should always take it. Some Medicaid stations have limited charges, but ones that spawn before key areas will always spawn with enough charges for everyone to get a heal, so no matter how much or how little health you have, make sure to take that healing. Especially make sure to heal if you are about to go into a boss fight or a particularly difficult event, even if you're using a Zealot Martyrdom build. Trust me, you'll always contribute more to the team alive without your stacks than dead. If you're new to Darktide, you might have a tendency to aim center mass or slightly down while fighting in melee. Doing this will make you miss out on a lot of extra damage and cleave potential you can get from headshots, so make sure to aim up while in melee to get as many headshots as possible. This isn't necessary on two-handed blunt weapons like the Crusher or Thunder Hammers, but it can still help squeeze out some extra DPS. You can even aim slightly above the heads of enemies as their head hitbox extends slightly above their model. If a boss is attacking you, do not run away from them. Running away causes your team to have to chase the boss around the map and significantly reduces your team's damage output. Instead, hold block and dodge a boss's attacks in order to keep them in a more confined area and make them easier to attack. Your team will thank you for that. You can even lock some bosses in place by repeatedly getting up in their face and dodging backwards. Dodging and blocking are incredibly powerful defensive and offensive tools to have at your disposal, and not using them makes surviving significantly harder. Blocking attacks can send your enemies reeling and open them up for counterattacks, pushing can knock enemies away from you and give you breathing room, and dodging can allow you to avoid attacks that would otherwise kill you, and you can even slide dodge to make dodging more forgiving. If you're brand new to the Tide series, it'll be difficult at first to remember to constantly be blocking, dodging, and pushing, but the more you play, the more natural it will eventually start to feel. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about these defensive tactics and other aspects of melee combat, check out my melee combat tutorial in the description below. If a teammate is trapped by a trapper, you might be tempted to kill the trapper first and any enemies around them before freeing them. It's a much better idea, though, to immediately free that teammate first, as not only will the trapper run away and give you time to free them, but the time to rescue someone from a net is near instantaneous. Likewise, if a teammate is trapped in the middle of a horde, prioritizing their rescue can be the difference between life and death for them, so always rescue first. In the same vein, if someone is downed in the middle of the horde, it's not a bad idea to try and thin out the horde first, but you don't have to kill absolutely everything before you try to revive them. Oftentimes, it's better to use a combat ability to stun enemies around them and rescue them or just get them up, especially if a horde is on the way and you need their help to survive. At some point in your Darktide gaming, you might have been downed, and upon being brought back up, you immediately got hit without even having a chance to block. Holding the block button while you are in the process of being revived or rescued from a disabler will pre-buffer the block action and allow you to block the instant you gain control again, allowing you to avoid taking seemingly unavoidable damage. Ragers are incredibly deadly opponents due to their fast attack speed, high damage, and high stagger resistance. Unless you're playing Ogryn who can easily stagger them, do not attack a Rager while they're in their flurry of attacks as you'll take a lot more damage than you'll deal. Instead, either use your combat ability to stun them, dodge backwards and shoot them with your ranged weapon, or just block and dodge and wait for a break in their attack to deliver some counter blows of your own. It's also not a bad idea to block and allow your teammates to safely dispatch them for you. The skill tree has some incredibly useful talents for you to use, and among those are toughness talents that aim to give you various ways to regain your toughness. Picking these up are crucial for your survival, so make sure not to skip them. 
Also, make sure to read them and make sure your build and selected toughness talents match, as selecting the wrong talent for your build can often be just as bad as not selecting one in the first place. For instance, if you choose to run Soul Stealer on Psyker, make sure you actually have a Force Sword or Staff in your build so you can actually make use out of the talent. Dark Tide can be an overwhelming game, but don't worry, the more you play, the easier it'll eventually become. Thanks for watching, and thanks to this month's Patreons for their continued support. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Dark Tide tips like this in the future. See y'all next time!